All right, let's see if I can complete this task. You seem smart. I need someone to give me the lowdown on this reality we're in. This reality. She pulls her hood closer to her neck. It's related to that medical episode. I have trouble remembering even the most basic. No time to explain. Just give me the lowdown. Maybe now is not the good time. No, let's do this. Medical episode. The episode. It sounds like an acute case of encephalopathy, now that I think of it. She puts down her thermal cup and looks at you. Don't don't be phased, madam. He functions perfectly well. He only needs a lowdown on all of reality. <clears throat> we may be here a while, then. She takes a long sip of tea. Ask away, officer. I'll help however I can. All right. We're in. I know these all look good, but... Begin with the first, okay? That's weird. These are these are very interesting things. <laughs> Begin with the first. We're in Martinez. And what is Martinez? Martinez is a district of Revachal. She looks around, her green raincoat flapping in the wind. A very small, distinct district tucked away near the Industrial Harbor, north of the 881 and Jamrock. You would be excused for not knowing about it. Unimportant, they say. Forgotten, even. Shelled to smithereens during the revolution, she shrugs. It has its charms. Just not during this time of the year. You mentioned a sea. What sea is this? It's not really a sea. It's the bay of Revachal, and the bay feeds into the ocean. Are we near the ocean? Yes. We are on an island in the ocean. The largest body of... The world's largest body of water, the Insulindic. Vast, lukewarm, and unknowable, flowing in and out of sight. What's the name of this island? Kalu. She looks to the waters. Imagine a pebble, a smoothed-over pebble, amidst a great blue sea, misshapen, cracked. The cracks are the River Esperance. We're in the delta of this river, on the sixth branch, the Martinez Distributary. It is clear this pebble is of enormous value to her, and to humanity at large. Tell me more about Martinez. I'm not a good ambassador. I've only been here once, as a teenager. Not a lot has changed. There are ruins, a terminal, fishing boats, reeds, boys with boxy shoulders. She, this place used to be a province, a workers' resort before the city swallowed it and the artillery did its work. The reeds are the real sh the reeds are the real star of the show here now. The further down the coast, the wilder it gets. Revachol is what you call a city. What kind of city? The great kind. As if it's self-explanatory, beyond patriotism. A fact. What makes Revachol great? History, detective. They built this city to resolve history. Our part in it, at least. Our centuries. Who built this city? The nations of the Occident, or migrant workers from the Semenine and Ilmara, depending on your creed. When was it built? In the Dolorian century, 380 years ago. And why will it resolve history? They say it's where the terrible questions of our time will be answered. The tensions are highest, the fault lines deepest. By that I mean conflicts. Ideological conflicts. The stuff of men. Why here? We are standing on a fertile, self-sufficient island able to sustain up to 200 million people in the middle of the Insulindic Ocean, the world's connective tissue. It's where the money is. So we're pretty much at the center of the world. Oh, we're quite a way off. About, she points across the water where the skyscrapers rise. A collection of tall ghosts behind water vapor, their light reflecting off their glass windows. 22 kilometers from the center of the world. That soldering iron is the bank of the world building. The bottom floors are Insurcom, Coalition Government, Insulindian Mission Command. 
the water, the light. It's as though you're seeing it for the first time. I don't know any of this. We are where we are. I have no truer answer to give, unfortunately. She watches. She watches you closely as you scan the horizon. Revachal Special Administrative Region, Lake Halu, the Insulindian Ocean, Coalition Government, Insulindian Mission Command, name after name, and none of them is familiar. They seem real, but something is wrong. You feel like a kid looking at stickers on the fridge. Truvant, the Apricot Company, World Games 34. You can almost see your hand reaching out for them. Scratch at the corner, see if they peel loose. This feels like the most important of all the thoughts, the one you truly must complete. So this is again this is kind of what I had what I had said at the start of the stream where I was like there it feels like there's been a tiny hint that maybe this isn't real that um that this isn't we're not like a real guy in a real place that this is something else that I don't know I also, it's so interesting that I, if I hadn't clicked that, would I ever have gotten that thought, the most important thought? I don't know. This is the one thought you need to complete. Where are you? Is there something else you wanted to know? I remember something about a lowdown. This has been informative. Thank you, ma'am. I'm sure my memory-impaired partner has many more questions to ask about even more fundamental aspects of reality. Like, he... This is weird that he would say that. Like, what? Might I suggest not asking them all right now? Madame Messier will be here t later, too. And tomorrow. Isn't that true, ma'am? Absolutely. My commitment here is long-term. Won't I be lazy if I don't do it all now? Of course not. You're already diligent for getting this far. And diligent boys remember where they left off. So the task was completed. No. Okay. It's, it's, been, it's been updated. Joyce is rich and willing to answer your questions. Ask one. These are unimportant times, detective. She puts her finger to her lips, then points at you. You and I were born after the dust had settled. A thousandth of a second too late. Too late for what? For the big time. Her eyes light up. There's a flash of teeth. What's the big time? The revolution. And what is this revolution I keep hearing about? It's quite easy. Every hundred years or so, our species gets together to decide what's next, who gets shot in the head, or who gets the mineral rights. It's a real kerfluffle. Have you ever played Final Fantasy XIV? It's like the Calamities. <laughs> Would you say it was a bunch of apes duking it out? <laughs> well, of course, we're, we're talking Duke Out Central. Full swing intraspecies warfare. And the apes, were they evil? No, I would say the apes were neutral. <sighs> Sounds like evil to me. On the other hand, she turns to the north. Maybe you're right. Can I get the skill point one away? I want more conceptualization. More conceptualization than your body has room for. Who got shot in the head? Those would be the communists, generally speaking. 40 million people got shot in the head during the World Revolution. But the communists, they all got shot in the head. Oh, and the anarchists, too. They shot them well. So well, one forgets they even existed. And would you look at that? My conceptualization skill point paid off already. Although, uh, it didn't really pay off. I didn't get any money for getting this right. You could say they totally... They got totally shot in the head. Indeed. 
<laughs> it texted off. They piled them in mass graves in Ozan, and, well, that's the last anyone heard of those people. They shoot back, did they ever? Before they got shot themselves, they shot two million people. No, wait, I know this one. If you shoot one person, it's a tragedy. If you shoot two, hundred, two million people, that's a statistic. That's what they say. Or someone said it. It was a kerfuffle, all right. The Insulindian Deluge, they called it. <laughs> Did anyone else get shot in the head on the opposing side? Oh, lots of people. Even the king got shot in the head, or thrown beneath a horse, or drowned. Accounts differ. It was unceremonious. Just as well, he wasn't actually the king, just the king's nephew. The real king abdicated and lived out a long and productive life as a venture capitalist in Grad. I don't care about kings. About the head shooting? No. Who got the mineral rights? The liberals got the mineral rights. She looks up to the sky, then inland at the crumbling city. And by mineral rights, I mean everything. Liberals are usually middle-class people, detective, or the remaining gentry. The beneficiaries of the pre-revolutionary arrangement. Some were rich enough to stay with the Constitution, with monarchy. Big mistake. Others bet on the revolution. They were called the ultras, or ultra-liberals. They fared well. How did the liberals win it all? They didn't win so much as survive. We were the last ones standing when the war ended. Everyone else got shot in the head, remember? Of course. We. She's one of We. She's one of them, of course. Who was there to surrender to? To foreign intervention. The coalition. Those people really took the mineral rights. Who are the coalition? The coalition of nations. Grad, Mesk, Vesper, Messina, Orange, Sur la Clef. The armed center of the world. They landed here and ended the revolution. It was the moralist thing to do. There is bitterness in her voice, tempered with understanding. She is critical, but ultimately understands the cause. Moralist? The moralists believe in keeping everything exactly the way it is. They believe in mineral rights and not shooting people in the head. At least not in the same manner and volume as the others do. They are the long-standing provisional rulers of Revachol now, the coalition government. Was one of the... Yeah, moralist is one of the uh, categories here. This is their zone of control. They emboldened the RCM with crumbs of the same law they took. Technically speaking, you are a moralist. <laughs> if always picking the option that doesn't commit to anything, then hell yes I am, and also not. Is that the neutral... So wait... Is, is is the neutral option, the I have no strong opinions one way or the other, is that, is that, am, am I wrong? Is that actually the moralist option of, uh, I, I will not take any sides, I will simply be the, the, uh, how do they describe them? The status quo, kind of? The people who don't want anything to change? <clears throat> or I guess he says hell yes I am and also not <laughs> sure I'll say I like the moralists maybe I don't know a devout man of the center hard to come by it's good to have someone who takes a moderate approach to head shooting in your line of work I mean when was this kerfluffle? The turn of the century revolution? Don't answer it, it's a trick question. The revolution began in 02, on the Isola of Grad, though by the end, nearly the whole world had gotten involved. Who started it? It wasn't a who, but a what. A pandemic of Tsarath, a particularly virulent prion disease, which the authorities in Grad proved unable to contain. Then Mazov came along and overthrew the government. What? Yes, what? What? Tell me more about this plague. No. A high... 
Ow. <laughs> Tarzatha is a highly infectious microorganism that destroyed brain tissue. Oh, that's that's what a prion is. A brain uh, parasite. Or brain, brain something. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, the actual causes of the revolution were material. The pandemic only provided the spark. Where did it spread from there? From Revachal and Grad? Not far. The world managed to cauterize itself. Mazov's government was overthrown in 08, and the coalition crushed the Revachal commune two years later. It was the end. What came next? Why, you and I, officer. She spreads her arms, raincoat flapping in the wind. Our lives in the zone of control. Something tells you her life and yours are not that similar. Perhaps it's because she has a boat and you have that necktie? A pair of pants? Our lives are very different from each other. No doubt, but we share the same time and position on the planet's crust. That counts for more than you'd think. What is the zone of control? A city-state divided into free market zones under the everlasting interregnum of the coalition of nations. And of course, and you, of course, the citizen's militia. The clatter of typewriter keys fills the main hall of a reappropriated silk mill. Precinct 41. Chad Tilbrook presses enter. Outside... Officer Elfboy Williams slams the door of an armored motor carriage. Did I? Did I say it would be a short chat? <laughs> the Zone of Control is the third incarnation of Revachal after the failure of the Suzerain and the Commune. What happened in the rest of the world? Modernity. They developed the marvels of inter, inter communication. Telematic milieus? Radiation, colored plastics. Meanwhile, in Revachal, West, in Revachal West, the aftermath continues for a, dec a fifth decade. It's been like this for how long exactly? 43 years. Hard to fathom, I know. What have we been doing all that time? The 20s saw a decade of urban war. West of the river, leveled. Offshore platforms in flames. Still, it's regarded on an improvement on what came before. 08 to 19 was simply hell. And after that, the 30s? Things settled down in the 30s. Revachol East transformed itself into the world's largest tax haven, with the international community's blessing. For the first time in a long time, it seems like things were going somewhere. Were they? No. It was a market mirage fuel fueled by cocaine and quantitative easing. The 40s dispelled it like a cold splash, an isola-wide hangover, you might say. And here we are. Curtsies. Get a reality lowdown. Welcome to reality, baby. What would you have done differently? Also, what? Oh, okay. It's just because now it's now it's done. What would you have done differently? Who are you in all this? And I ask you, pastless detective of the citizen's militia, what insight has incute encephalopathy given you? So a medical solution. So a quarter of humanity simply lost their minds? And how would you stop a prion? A complex folding protein, unlife, with the technology 50 years ago. Jeez. <laughs> Hygiene, social care, research. Moderate solution to an extreme problem. It's these sort of half measures that doomed the authorities in Grad. When they failed to step up, Mazov and his party stepped in. In this particular case, maybe a more robust state response might have been appropriate. Hmm. Opinions expressed here do not reflect the official position of the RCM. And what is your official position, Lieutenant? My position, ma'am? My parents got ripped to shreds in the revolution. I would have gone the same way. I was saved by being two years old. That's my position. The abattoir. That's enough about the times. Yeah, 
ask her who she is. I want to know what you are. Hmm. What are you? I am the vilest of the vile, she says with a sudden flash of teeth. A traitor. A devourer of nations and infants. I am an ultra. She raises the corner of her mouth, smirking. <laughs> Dios mio! A liberal! <laughs> What's so vile about that? Haven't you heard? She nods pedag pedagogically. I am another creature of the Forbidden Swamp. One of those who pushed the king under a shit wagon and betrayed the revolution. I can see you thought I'd gone instinct. No sane person identifies as an ultra-liberal anymore. Not in broad daylight. She looks you in the eye. You're a centrist at heart. A real moralist. Tell me, now that I've uncoiled myself, do you find me frightening? In her green eyes, you see a mixture of truth and self-satire, decades of guilt and pride. I don't care. A fitting punishment, she smirks, to be forgotten, if not forgiven. Save a prayer for us in our chateaus on Ozan and Stella Marie. When the dust settled, the liberals were the only ones left to clean up the mess. By virtue of their survival, they were handed enormous power to shape the future. She turns her gaze to the Delta. This was all our last generation managed. Would you have done something differently? With due respect to our overlords, the eternal caretaker government that keeps Martinez a monument... With due respect to our overlords, the care eternal caretaker government that keeps Martinez a monument to the efficacy of its artillery, I would not have relinquished so sovereignty to, to the coalition. I can't talk. It's been like three hours of nothing but talking. <laughs> Especially this conversation. I would not have relinquished sovereignty to the Coalition. Not here in Martinez. And not in this Stella Marie's or Delta Beachheads either, if not for my own sake. She realizes her small cold fists are clenched. She loosens them. Then for my daughters. We had an obligation to defend our sovereignty. We should have burned the whole Isola down rather than let them have it. Dark orange flames reflect in her green eyes, an oil fire on the ocean. You're a patriot? I suppose I am, but I wouldn't be a patriot anywhere but here. Seditious talk, ma'am. You have daughters. Whatever else I am, I'm also a mother and a wife. Now, shall we return to reality? Right, let's conclude that for now. astonishingly long <laughs> and yet there is still much more oh what is it was this here before a list of of white checks that i either didn't do or failed okay i don't have a city map I know, but that's also going to be, like, I, I don't trust that to be short, and I want to end the stream in about 15 minutes. I for sure will not forget to do it. <laughs> Belly of this boat shines like it was recently painted. Because it's also late enough that uh, people are going to be at the uh, the thing. Oh, this was how I got there, of course. There's so much to do.
Can I talk to the dumb kid? The, the Kunoet? Are you trying to sneak up on me? Come to slit my throat in my sleep. You're not sleeping. Apparently she doesn't like people standing Please behind her back. Me out. To snuff me out. Are you sleeping right now? Don't get so fucking clever with me, pig. You think you're so clever. Trying to sneak up on me. Oh, all right. Apparently, you can't talk to her from th from this side of the fence. <laughs> she doesn't like it. I wonder if I can buy a map in here. You got maps? Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. I am the law. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? It's I'm a bookstore, still. sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Encyclopedia, do a better job. Board games are like little games on a table, made to pass the time. There are several different ones, but sailors here mostly buy cards. A postcard is a small cardboard picture. You can write a few words on the other side and send it to your friend or beloved. Uh -oh. She is unfazed by your questions. She would consider it impolite to point out any perceived weirdness. That is a book. They have stories inside them. It's like someone told you a story in a really long letter. My, my encyclopedia has been fine so far. My pleasure. Anything else you'd like to know? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I heard they're about books. What is your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mom. Her name is Placence. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organizing the stock. Gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts her eyes wide, as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. Yeah, why are you standing out here in the cold? <laughs> I'm signaling that our store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. A sudden gush of wind, not gust, gush of wind turns the pages on the book. She covers her face, smiling, but she's cold. I could help by brutally dismantling the free market. <laughs> okay. No, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mom by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. Shouldn't you be at school or something? <laughs> I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mom run this place. What is school, anyway? Mine is a big yellow building on Boogie Street, and the people there run it. They say it's a charity. Isn't going to school more important than this? Mom says it's nece necessary to do both because it builds character. Mom says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting ed etiquette. How's business going? It's peachy. A little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Cursed in what way? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go through... Or that they all go... Bankrupt. I've been doing fine so far. Can I get a task to uncurse the building? <laughs> Please do look at our wares inside. How does this curse manifest itself? It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. 
I liked it better when we were talking about whether it is appropriate to f stand out in freezing weather. But Kim, the plasmic manifestations. No such thing. Hang on, let me see the other thing. I'll show you. I don't know, like, I'll show you. That kind of I'll show you. Doesn't allow me to sneak around the back rooms or cellar. Enough about the curse for now. I'm going to go inside here and equip a flashlight so that I may see. Oh, it even told. Well, that's random. I was going to do it anyway. I'm ignoring you, lady. I gotta find out about the curse. Look at that. Tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket. A what? Dangles from Excuse the Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. What's behind the curtains? Nothing. Why aren't you browsing the books? She fiddles with her pendant. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? You ought to. <laughs> she has, she has a, a mind control pendant to force us to uh, buy books. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Look at the trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Aside from poking it, suspiciously... There's nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. I'm going to try to buy a map first before I get kicked out of the store. I'll see if they sell maps. <laughs> the book collects the national recipes of Arda. They are all about lake trout. Board games. The Man from Hjemdal series. Wow, more Hjemdal. Mountains of it. Heroic quantities of Hjemdal. Roy's puny skirt <laughs> shirt is nothing compared to the real deal. Rows and rows of Hjemdalerman... <laughs> <laughs> Blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hyamdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hyamdal. Return to Hyamdal. And the solipsistic Man from Hyamdal and the Hyamdal Man. Good God, how many are there? Maybe a hundred? Man from Hyamdal and the Sages at the End of the World. Man from Hyamdal and the False God. Man from Hyamdal and the Scorched Earth. Man from Hyamdal the Hyamdal Colonies. Man from Hyamdal and the Swamp Beast. Man from Hjelmdal and the Snow Crabs. Not even close. <laughs> Man from Hjelmdal in Hell. Man from Hjelmdal in the Forest Leaves. Man from Hjelmdal under the Lake. Man from Hjelmdal, Hjelmdal Burning. There's even a The Trial of Death, a prosternal combat game book set in the world of Hjelmdalermen and so much more. Do any of the books call out to me? Twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Your hand reaches toward a book with a glossy cover art of a very muscular man from Hyamdal in chains, kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. She's laughing at him, belittling him. Between the throne and the Hyamdaler man lies a bonfire. Casting shadows on the wall, the shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hjelmdal and the Devil Woman. <laughs> Aren't all women devil women? <laughs> they've, given, they've given a bunch of opportunities so far to, to be, like, women-hating. With the, uh, the conversation we had with, with Gart... I do want to see what hap what what happens. 
Especially those leering types who seem to wear nothing but an armored bikini. <laughs> There's also some sort of snake lizard beast sna slithering around her abdomen, chest, shoulder region. It's symbolic of vice and sin. Wow, for nine bucks, do I actually want it? At some point, maybe I will come back and try to buy that. I've got a, I've got a bag full of uh, stuff. Welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. My name is Plaisance. Plaisance. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Challenging, but I succeeded. Her face looks powdery and painted from all the makeup. Before we go on, you seem to be well enough. Can you give me some money? <laughs> it would be nice if you could give me that. Is that only showing up because I made this roll? I'm gonna... It's silly, but I'm gonna try it. Sir, don't be ridiculous. I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavor. One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. <laughs> Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. Are you I the owner am of this store? The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Many of the things that I have done so far are not cop-like. It's cursed. Cursed? Who said that? Annette? I will have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. What if I want to buy a book? Goodness, you were already doing good browsing the shelves. Why, why'd you stop? <laughs> Don't you feel compelled? Go, go, get back there. The books await you. What types of books do you have? Everything is on the shelves. Okay, fine. Farewell for now, book peddler. I want a map. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Couple spook novels hide amidst the detective books. Thrilling tales of spycraft and daring do. What's all this crime fiction? Oh, crimes, robberies, murders, even sexual crimes. We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories to sort all that out. You're a, a police officer, apparently. You should buy all of these. <laughs> they really do teach a person how to be a good detective. Do I, is this the face of a man who has forgotten about the curtains? No. Tome of fascist magic. <laughs> Biographies of famous people. You will attain a place on this shelf one day or die trying. The greatest innocence. It's an important educational tool delving into to the depths of religion, history, and the relation to innocentic power. Who or what is an innocence? A very influential historical figure, but surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired, in the shift in the tired order of things. Do you recommend it? Certainly. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely, it's important somehow. There is something personal inside. Can't I just pick it up and read it while I'm in the store for free?
paranormal books. <laughs> Does that work? The point of the book, many others on the shelves, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. It serves platitudes, while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to, and which costs more than this book, is garbage and would only give you cancer anyway, without even curing your cold or anything. Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of everything, though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from, how to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver, and there's even a chapter on using ancient Surrey's tradition of using duck gallbladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. What's even paranormal about this? The throbbing in your head increases with every passing moment you gaze at this shelf. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a small green book becomes apparent. The title of it reads, Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. What's the pale? The book contains very little explanation on the matter. This knowledge seems to be taken for granted. The book contains descriptions of pseudo, uh, various pseudoscientific therapies, alternative medicines, and folk remedies involving the pale, also known as la territor, la territory. For example, it rep recommends vigorously swatting one's naked body with a venic or hand broom made from the leafy twigs of a young birch tree from the near pale. Sounds invigorating. It is, and good for the circulation. Consuming distilled spirits like vodka or whiskey that have been aged in the pale. Readers are instructed to cover these jars in a shallow hole just inside the pale and leave them there for 30 to 60 days depending on the potency to center. And what does this pale aged liquor do? Restore a damaged liquor to perfect health. How is that possible? Take regular strolls through the pale, through, uh, limit the stroll to less than an hour. Cleanse the mind of worries and the body of toxins, especially if the ambulate, perambulator rep <clears throat> if the perambulator performs this ritual in the nude. Nudity figures prominently in a number of these prescriptions. This is exactly what you need. Cures for men who are struggling to perform their marital obligations. I don't need that. No maps, huh? Is that maps? You people. You people and your doubts about my ability to find maps. Look at the map of Revachal. Northern coast of Verdant Island, shadowed by the Dow. We already know that. That's a rich deal. And west of the river, Colon. Jam, jam rock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. So small, you can't even see it. Nope, there it is. North of Jam Rock. Look at the map of Martinace. It's a tourist thing. A picture postcard. 48. Detail it could be useful for scouting ahead. <laughs> Apartment twenty eight in the e now I know there's there's a ton of things to do and I remembered all of them. Archipelagos, you see constellations of small blue small dots on the light blue emptiness of the insulindic ocean. The largest in the northeast is La, La Kalu. Kalu, you are here. Simonese Islands, Ile de Fantôme. What? Oh, what else? Let's do names, names, names. In the north, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Kalu in a bookstore. It's you.
Revachal, single black star. Found a few other things. Mundi is the North Asmuth. Grad, Samara, Seol, Isola, as they're called. Connections to other worlds. Worlds past the Insulindian. Unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. Encyclopedia Impossible? There was, there was a role that I needed a 17 for? You have little idea what they are. Distant stars, gods, but looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you, and very, very far away. And another 17 that I couldn't possibly get. Perhaps they are gods. Gods of distance and outer dust. The map, map of Martin Ace is the only one available. Martin Ace, 90 cents. Why is that one so cheap? Out of date map of a tourist location that never that never was nor came to be. Okay. It's a white check too. Um, well, she'll be mad. She can't see me from up here. Hold on. What will give me more interfacing? The gloves? <laughs> Put on my gardening gloves. You can't steal anything with fingerless gloves on. You'll get fingerprints all over it. No! What did I roll? I rolled a five. I failed it by one. <laughs> Before you can even reach it, you're interrupted. <coughs> Perhaps not. It's against RCM policy to defraud small business owners. Then I'll steal it later. 90 cents. I think I'm made of money. 90 cents I'll never get back. <laughs> All right. Give me the uh Yeah, give me that. We're going in. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for customers. Her hand is closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling, Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I am sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go in there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. The curtains do seem frail suddenly. Not robust enough to contain a, a slippery darkness. Is this about the curse? No, it's just a storeroom for employees, I told you. Now please, step away from the curtains. I don't care. You can't stop me. I'll open them. No! She raises her hand to try to stop you. Please, just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk through this before you decide to do anything extreme. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. <laughs> the curtains, tattered with age and covered with dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Now that she's said, like, come over and talk, maybe I'll talk to her. Hello again, esteemed officer. And what? welcome to crime, romance... Why are you so uptight about the curtains? I told... I already told you, it's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be... Drawn to the books. She's so tense it's a miracle she hasn't snapped in half yet. 
If it's just a storage room, why do you have that strange trinket on the curtains? It's just for decoration. She wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight-lipped smile. Then something breaks. Okay, fine. It's because this place is cursed. Just like Annette said, they don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. Host of hosts, she prays, guard me and my honest business venture from the curse that lurks behind the curtains. Have you sought help from anyone? A criminal, perhaps. <laughs> I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Seminese mediators. They provided me with the wards. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protects us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even now, even though now I fear it's not enough. How does this curse manifest itself? The curse is so much worse that you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. Her voice drops to a whisper. It's the curse of financial distress or of ruin and bankruptcy. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? I was hoping for something more paranatural. But officer, there's nothing natural about entire companies declaring bankruptcy. I'm talking about caco demons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an, un an eerie lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. Sounds familiar. I feel unwanted too. What does it mean? Truly so? Her eyes narrow as she tries to get a read on your energy. Perhaps the dark energies are leeching off you? You shouldn't stay in this store too long. It may be dangerous. Oh, this? It's, hold the pendant in her palm. It's a special Hymean amulet. Blessed by desert gypsy pygmy... P desert pygmy shamans. I don't know where I got gypsy pygmies from. <laughs> Desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell. She, for example, she nods. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Would you like me to take the case? I can investigate, see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can continue or so they can return to their slumber. I am a master of the psychic arts. Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidy looks like. Wait, what if I don't want to lie? You're not lying. <laughs> You're giving her peace of mind. The means are thus justified. I came here to help. I've handled paranatural situations before. Are you sure? Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I sense the psychic emanations from afar. The sleeper beyond calls out. Or I have returned from the void. A paradetective from a long line of paradetectives. Let's go with the first one. Sleeper beyond. I'm not sure I can trust your claims. Honestly, you look like a bit of a drinker. I'm sorry for being so blunt, but... <laughs> the lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. Go ahead, then. Rock her world, he thinks. I'll compose some notes. <laughs> it's necessary to drink the spirits in order to contact the void. Will she believe that? Maybe. How do you know all this? <laughs> Drama. Here we go. I am the Void Rev Revenant. I have the powers to be de bad all the bad energies. I should have realized. A pattern lies within the fabric. The hand of fate guides us. Our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. Perhaps you truly are the one to deliver this woman from the doom. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us keep us safe i won't allow any collateral damage to hit us <laughs> no problem whatsoever your family is safe the phantoms are no match for me i'm not going to ask him to vouch for me 
Am I? What did he say up here? Kim, Kim has zero drama skill. He can't even roll a three. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? On my honor. Investigate doomed commercial area. <laughs> Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. Do not act surprised. <laughs> you know of these things, sire. <laughs> can, I, can I put more points in drama? Can I can I move these points over here to drama? I like drama now. He hasn't spoken up that much. <laughs> Of course, the entity, for I have sensed its presence. <gasps> you have. The entity takes the form of a woman, a witch probably. I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you know that she lives in the chimney? Chimney, the passage between heaven and hell, of course. <laughs> All of a sudden, I want to do. I want to do the Ang Hao voice <laughs> from Hotful Boyfriend. <laughs> That chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself beh behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. I got a key. Some unnatural magic, I assume. She shivers. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked around. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse what you discover in there. A few more questions about the curse. Why didn't you tell me right away it's the curse? Not good to talk about the curse in detail. The negativism, it's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. Wow, void wraiths, you have new words. So I think there was a, um, did she mean that there's another way through? Did she not want me to go through the curtains? There's somewhere else that you can enter the bookstore. Also, I'm going to see, is this, can I steal this again now? No, not anymore. <clears throat> All right. I, I guess we'll, st man. I could play this game forever, <laughs> but we're gonna, we'll, we'll put a stop to it here. I also feel like in doing this, I have obliterated like actually having a particular character <laughs> for this, uh, for this guy. This is a thing that I'm just doing because it's, it's fun and silly, not because it's, uh, what my, you know, quote-unquote, what my character would do. <laughs> All right. Uh, that, oh, man, that's... Was that unintentional just now? That while you're on the screen, he keeps moving the flashlight around? All right. Uh, we'll play more of this on Thursday. Thank you guys for coming. I hope you enjoyed. I am definitely enjoying it. Yes. We'll be playing this for a while, I think. <laughs>